Okay, SCPs are awesome. Godzilla's awesome. But you know what's more awesome is SCP Godzilla's. I made a sandwich. This amazing channel, The Rubber, has brought to us an SCP Godzilla so we can see what this thing does. It's gotta be extra, like Godzilla, but like extra, I don't know, extra weird stuff. Giant balls or something. I hope it's, I hope it's not that. But either way, check out this channel. Link down below. Leave a like, subscribe, and let's do it. <laughs> SCP-5391. I'm gonna forget that. I'm listening. It's like math homework. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh my god. Engulfed in the dark waters, the great serpentine feels the rush of the sea once more. It feels the vibration, its brethren shake it, as if telling it to leave. But where could they go in this dark environment? It matters not, for it has found its prey. Forged in ancient magma, the shell of the destroyer glows and burns brightly. I feel like there's, uh, uh, is there some backstory I'm supposed to know? I'm, I'm a little confused right now. Who is the destroyer? Is that Bowser? Is it, is, is, is what's going on? It breaks free. It's a learning ground, experience. It held it for millennia to walk the earth once more. A kaiju just broke out. Okay. Stone in its wake. Her memory is hazy, but she remembers how she had died and was brought back to this world by her devout followers. And of course, her violent skirmishes with the serpent, dredged from the grave and thrown into the land of the living once again. There's so much in the SCP universe I don't understand. Just when I thought I had a grasp, there's ancient warrior kaiju battles. The like, queen what? of the monsters let out a cry that echoes through the ages. The queen of monsters. Beyond the great deeps, the behemoths hear the call. They stir and rouse, a kingdom of swarming beasts, dozens of them, all powerful and mighty. My first instinct was Amy Schumer rising up and roaring, but also, what's going on right now? I'm so f***ing confused. Awaken from their deep slumber. In the embrace of the abyss, the serpent grows restless. The old battle will repeat itself, as it had in the past. Will Is this, this be Earth? the one that finally ends this vicious cycle? Though weary and tired of the violence, still it sharpens its fangs and readies to face its old nemesis once more. What? Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Esoteric Class Object SCP-5391. Thank God this guy's here to explain this to us right now. I was so, I was like a, a child lost in a department store, dude. SCP-5391, also known as Anastasis, Ooh. is an anomalous event. It refers to the awakening of large-scale aggressors, or LSA, following the revival of LSA Brazil-01. Okay, this is where SCP gets crazy complex and confusing. It's an event? The SCP is an event? That will- it's like Armageddon, but with Kai- it's- it's- it's a- how can- I'm so these is it a verb? LSAs are collectively referred to as SCP-5391-1, in addition to their individual designations. In 1998, Foundation agents successfully detained and captured POI-2889, Stanislav Nikolev, a former scientist and director of Prometheus Lab, which operated the Anastasis Project, the revival of LSA Brazil-01. Brazil-01, dubbed the Queen of the Monsters, is a massive entity with the head of a crocodile oh my God. and tentacles for its lower body. It was once considered neutralized, but was revived by Prometheus Lab. Anyone else is confused right now? I am confused right there with you, brother, but you gotta admit that Kaiju looks insane. As a result, it is currently outfitted with large amounts of paratechnical components that further accentuate its abilities. Oh, uh, that, that, that brain fart, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's too early for these words. <laughs> Nikolev sat in Site-40's interrogation room. The television in the corner was showing news footage of the destruction caused by LSA Stromboli-08. Stromboli! He smirked the entire time as he watched the footage play. Stromboli-08 is an armored ankylosaurian entity. Its anomalously hard shell plating features numerous broad spines that end in a narrow point. That's awesome! The seams between these plates have a scintillating red glow, similar to that of molten rocks. Buried beneath the like volcanic island, the armored behemoth burst through the earth, causing the island volcano to erupt. The island was engulfed in magma, and its complete destruction soon followed. Oh my the god! It showed fighter jets engaging the beast, but were shot down by magma expelled from Stromboli 08's body. That is the coolest looking kaiju right there. I now think like every other SCP is no longer an issue. Once these things happen, they could all just, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on! Some the freaking head kaiju! The of 5391, Dr. Mikasa Kaori entered the room. She turned off the TV and sat down in front of Nikolev. Before she began introducing herself, she noticed Nikolev looking at her. He smiled wryly and glanced briefly at the people outside the room. 
Then back to Dr. Kaori. I know what you're thinking and what you want to know, Dr. Kaori. It's just simply this. I believe the downfall of humanity is that those in power tend to believe themselves to be gods. Why do I believe this? Because I was one of those idiotic fools. I gotta pee! I'm sorry, nature called. Who thought they belonged to the pantheon of divine beings. Pantheon? The Anastasis Project was nothing more than a need for us to fulfill a self-proclaimed prophecy to prove that we were above even Mother Nature herself. We succeeded in reviving that gargantuan creature. Of course, with a few adjustments of our own to improve upon its natural design. But we are Mother Nature, bro. When we do stuff, it's Mother Nature doing stuff because we're part of it, you goober. After all, we had the power to do so. And we thought, why- Wait, that was stupid to say. <laughs> Should we not? And that brilliant question has brought us to this. So what was the price for our actions? the lives of everyone at the Prometheus Labs. Jesus! It was nothing in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> it's quite a fitting name, wouldn't you say? For it was Prometheus who brought the gift of fire to humanity from the gods. We too brought a gift. We have revived a creature capable of threatening the existence of mankind. And man has controlled and ruined Earth for far too long. Oh my right god! Now, this world is being returned to its rightful masters. Yeah, but I, I get the whole logic and everything. It's the same as like the chick from Godzilla King of the Monsters, but I just don't see how destroying all the land and setting everything on fire is going to repair the planet, you know? And I'm proud Emma to admit Russell, that I have been an right? integral part of it. That, that's the chick's name from King of the Monsters, Emma Russell. That's what he's doing right now. Just then, a message came through the speaker. Dr. Kaori, we've detected an LSA not far from the facility. Oh my it's about god! It's to collide with a civilian vessel, mobilizing all forces now. Fighting them is hopeless, Dr. Kaori. <laughs> Dr. Kaori, this guy is insanely diabolical. He's got like the same plot as the chick from King of the Monsters, but he's extremely evil with it, whereas she thought she was doing the right thing, but like they were both doing the same thing. I think one of them is, I think legit Emma Russell was just evil. Like if she just didn't see it, that's space. So just many people probably died. Your fate. Oh. Okay. Wake 02 surfaced in the Pacific Ocean, about 12 kilometers west of Site 40. The serpentine behemoth approached a fishing vessel and struck. It lunged through the vessel and obliterated it instantly. Oh my resulting god! Resulting in multiple casualties on board. Oh my god! The Foundation's forces arrived at the scene half an hour later with several helicopters, two armed vessels, and the high energy concentration <laughs> railgun. Dude, it, it brought the firepower. It brought a Death Star to take this thing out. Jesus! Pecor, primed and ready in orbit. MTF H5 deployed from Dimensional Site 172 and engaged Wake 02. Dimensional Site 172? That's how I keep getting lost in this whole thing. The, the intricacies of this is crazy. Even Dimensional Base. Who funds this? They attempted to use a binding field to put Wake 02 into stasis, but failed, as Wake 02 emitted a small scale EMP that rendered the device useless. What the hell is that Back thing? In the control room, Dr. Kaori redirected efforts to evacuate civilians. Civilians among the wreckage. Why is he petting the him like that? The survivors were scrambling <laughs> to board a helicopter. Wake 02 noticed and opened its mouth, shooting out a second head at the helicopter. Oh and my god! It. Dr. Kaori ordered the anti thaumatological cannons to fire. They successfully pierced through Wake 02 and damaged it to a considerable degree. Anti thaumatological? Damn, I already forgot. The, what the hell kind of gun is that? This, this video is calling me stupid in numerous ways. The Fancy pants guns. Let out a shriek of rage and lunged towards the helicopters, destroying the cannons. What is that little mouth thing, dude? Kaori then called for the deployment Damn. of Kaori. It took out a large chunk of Wake Zero Two. The serpentine behemoth appeared to have been neutralized. Dude, but before gnarling. Dr. Kaori and her team could celebrate, Wake Zero Two began to rapidly regenerate from all the damage it sustained. Oh my God! It shrieked towards the sky, as if taunting them for their futile efforts. Damn it! Dr. Kaori slammed her fist on the desk. Left with no other options, she ordered a full-scale retreat. Wake 02 disappeared beneath the waves soon after. I love its little xenomorph mouth. I'm cheering for this one the most. The other one's pretty cool, but this one's got a little mouth. It's pops, The next dude. day, Dr. Kaori arranged for a meeting with site director Simmons. Oh my god. Two days ago, something happened in Paraguay. 
An entire Foundation expedition team was killed. Damn! There were ruins there. Labyrinthine cave systems filled with remnants of an ancient civilization you've never even heard of. Oh my god. The higher-ups are starting to put the pieces together about why this is happening, what these things are, and what's about <laughs> to come. But if you ask me, these don't even come close enough to giving us a solution. I trust that you have something else in mind, Doctor? Dr. Kaori nodded. Dr. Scientist! She took from her folder and handed it to him. Simmons looked at it and smiled. <laughs> All right, I see. He pushed past the door and addressed everyone in the room. All right, fellas, stop whatever you're doing and listen. <laughs> Lately, these big, ugly <laughs> monsters have been kicking our butts. Why are you gonna throw it ugly? This isn't about looks, Dr. Scientist. They did us dirty and got us by surprise. Hey. They've killed countless innocent lives, oh my God. but no more. Now we will fight back. We will show these monsters no mercy. We will have a monster of our own oh. because this, this is our monster. So let's build a giant freaking mech. Meanwhile, in I'll be the so Wonders happy library, if this franchise moves toward, like SCP moves toward Pacific Rim, that's all I ever wanted. For everything to slowly turn into Pacific Rim or Godzilla. The last thousand steps finally came to a stop at the bottom of the ravine. Samuel sat down in exhaustion, then looked up into the abyss of the library. No, this is no time to rest. But it smells like ass down need there. To keep moving. He gripped his lantern tighter and stood back up. Suddenly, a voice spoke to Samuel from the shadows ahead. Uh, hello? He raised his lantern and took a few cautious steps forward. Soon, an old man appeared in front of him. Apologies if I don't look presentable. I don't get out much. Where are you headed, young man? Oh, I, uh, I'm looking for the history of Behemoth's section. The old man's eyes widened Jesus! as he moved to stroke his chin. Hey, what was that? <laughs> Samuel noticed the serpent's hand tattoo on his forearm. Ah, I know of the way. Follow me. Why do his eyes look they like that? At the end Kill of the maze. It was an open area with no bookshelves in sight, only torn papers and scraps of wood covering the floor. Then, an expression of dread crossed the old man's face. Before they could react, the library shook. The floor beneath them collapsed, swallowing them into the void. They fell and fell and fell. Samuel gasped and opened his eyes. He was back at the same spot he had just been standing. What the hell? The old man was gone. He began sprinting forward with the lantern in hand. After a while, he reached the bookshelves again. But this time, a massive silverfish about two stories tall came out of nowhere and swallowed an entire bookshelf. What? Samuel lost his balance and fell on the ground, catching the silverfish's attention. It charged forward, its legs violently pounding on the floor. Completely taken over by fear, Samuel froze like a deer in headlights. In a flash, oh something my God. massive charged into the silverfish and crashed into the other bookshelves. Sounds it's the like serpent ripped apart followed, then gradually died down. Samuel crept forward and saw the serpent. I knew it! Its jaws clamped onto the now lifeless silverfish before tearing it apart. Then the serpent reached into its stomach with its reptilian tongue, pulling out a mucus covered book and flung it into Samuel's arms. Oh! Hands shaking, Samuel wiped the mucus off and saw the title, Extinction of Behemoths. Nasty. For a moment, he was speechless. Samuel looked up and met the serpent's eyes. I can sense them. They have returned. Then I must go deal with them once again. The serpent flapped its plumage and ascended into the darkness above. Essentially, the serpent is Godzilla. I got this. I got the story. Then all was quiet. The Foundation had found evidence of LSAs roaming the Earth far before our times, but they never found out how they had all disappeared. That was why Samuel was sent to the library, to find a way to defeat the newly arisen LSAs once more. He reached up, hands still shaking, and turned on his radio. Samuel now knew what had happened without even having to read the book. The serpent had killed them all, and it will do so again. I love this dude, that was awesome. Like, I love a giant, ancient, prehistoric, mega species stories. I love how, how it, was, it was combined into SCP. I, I also love the monsters a bunch, dude. I want to see more of that one with the xenomorph mouth at some point in my life. I feel like that thing was disgusting, dude. Anything that has a little mouth coming out of a big mouth is like tops. I don't know, dude, that Anki Kaiju was pretty awesome too, though. And I think that one kind of resembled Godzilla the most. The other one had like tentacles, so I'm very, I'm very torn. But anything with a mini mouth immediately is just like the coolest. Either way, this video was awesome. Check out this channel, link 
down below. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>